All right, welcome. Thank you so much for coming. So, it took a lot of work to get this play off the ground. I don't want to say too much because I don't want to spoil anything, but all I'll say is I hope you enjoy this as much as we enjoyed making it. If a basic purpose of art is to illuminate human nature, then I think Comedy Central's Nathan For You deserves a spot in the conversation about the best TV shows of this era. A while ago, I was working with a uh, jungle child. His name was uh, Dendi. He was a great inspiration for me. And uh, unfortunately, tragically, he died in, uh, when baboons kidnapped and uh, ate him. Not only is it so funny that I cry laughing at almost every episode, but it reveals small truths about human nature in a way that's unique, I think, for television. In this episode, for example, Nathan, on his never-ending quest to help small businesses, meets a bar owner who says her bottom line was cut in half by laws that prohibit smoking indoors. So to fix this, Nathan finds a legal loophole that says people can smoke inside if the smoking is part of a theatrical production. So he tells smokers to come back, then invites a couple of theater goers to sit in a special audience section where they think they're watching a legitimate play. It's so funny because it's like so nothing in a way, but incredibly profound. There are three categories of people involved in this scheme, and they each know different things. Well, four categories if you're counting Nathan, but we'll get to him later. The first is Ellen, the bar owner. She thinks Nathan is a business consultant with a reality TV show who is genuinely trying to help her by exploiting a loophole in the law. Then there are the bar's patrons, who think they found a place to smoke inside without reproach. Unlike Ellen, the patrons don't know about the theatrical framing, presumably thinking that the audience section is just another seating area in the bar. Finally, there are the theater goers, who don't know about the business consultation and genuinely think they're seeing an experimental production. Now, there are a lot of ways that you can read this show. Full Fat Videos made an excellent piece recently on how Nathan For You satirizes the phenomenon of fake news. I'll link to it below, definitely check that out. But one of the other key things I think Nathan is interested in here is showing us how people really act when normal expectations are met with absurd circumstances. As John Teddy of the AV Club once said, Fielder uses the rank artificiality of TV and TV making to extract this surprising authenticity out of people. Everybody involved in this setup knows that they're being filmed. They just don't know what they're being filmed for, or rather what they think they're being filmed for is wrong. And the dramatic irony opened up by the difference between what they think and what we know lets a realness in their character slip through. A realness they don't even know they're offering. The couple uh, stands out to me because it tells a story that maybe they're in a new relationship. Uh -huh. And I think that curiosity is what makes me want to continue to watch. Do um, you think this has theatrical merit? Yeah, you know, this is slice of life theater. And uh, for that aspect, I think it's important. For Nathan, one level of artificiality is never enough. Spurred on by the real praise of his fake play, he transcribes the real actions of the patrons, turns it into a real script, and hires real actors to play all the parts. Then he invites a real audience to watch a real play, which is all based on fakeness. This time, however, all the people involved are aligned. The actors think they're participating in a play, and they are. The audience thinks they're watching a play, and they are. And Ellen, well, who the hell knows what Ellen thinks at this point. The only two categories of people who really know better are Nathan and us. The original pretense of the episode, helping Ellen with her business problem, is gone. To have the external omniscient perspective, you actually need to know about the show, Nathan For You, and what it's all about. In fact, that's what this moment is effectively doing. It's demonstrating the premise of the show itself. I hope you enjoy this play as much as we enjoyed making it. One aspect of this episode, and really a theme of the whole series, is Nathan's desperate attempts to connect with other people. Most of the time, we're encouraged to believe that Nathan is making people uncomfortable for our benefit, so that he can reveal them to us. I mean, I wouldn't want to be a third wheel, you know? That's what it would be, so... Oh, okay. Yeah. But the show also encourages us to question that idea, sometimes intensely. Look into my eyes and say, I love you. I love you. Again. 
I love you. Again. I love you. Again. I love you. Again. I love you. Again. I love you. Again. You have tears in your eyes. Oh, really? Yeah. What you begin to realize is that no one, not even the TV audience, can have a more omniscient perspective than Nathan's own. There's only ever one man behind the curtain. Though the show does make a pretty strong argument that he too is unsure of whether there's anything at the core of all these layers of artifice. It's kind of weird having cameras around, right? We could turn them off if you want. <laughs> could we? Do you want it? <laughs> I feel like that, does that defeat the purpose? Maybe? Of what? I don't know. What's the purpose? Nathan For You is hands down one of the funniest shows in TV history. I'm obviously a huge fan and I've seen some major results physically. But there's more to this show than just comedy. Nathan uses comedy and the construct of television to let us see into people's souls. These little interactions, these moments of awkwardness and sincerity, what people are willing to say for success, what people are willing to go along with to preserve the status quo. These are the building blocks of culture. In the later chapters, it actually says you spend a lot of time volunteering with jungle children. I don't know what that is, but you might want to bring it up because audiences love someone who gives back and is charitable. Okay. I'll be able to, I'll tell them, you know, what they want to hear. It can be shocking to see people like this. And part of the reason we laugh is to express this shock, this embarrassment at seeing someone so nakedly. But I think this laughter is recognition too. In the end, these people are really no different than us. Who knows how we would react if we found ourselves in one of Nathan's schemes without knowing it. I work with a uh, child named Dendi who was a very, a ch it was an inspiration and uh, just like to help and, and, and work with uh, people, with kids. And at that time, uh, you know, tragically, uh, he was uh, kidnapped and, and he was eaten uh, by baboons at that time. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching. This one was a personal favorite of mine. I absolutely love the show and have for a long time. So thank you for watching. Um, this episode was brought to you by Squarespace. If you wanna make a website and you want it to be a really easy process, Squarespace has some beautiful award-winning designer templates to choose from. That makes the process super simple. It's got 24 hour customer service, no upgrades, nothing to install, no patches ever. And picking your domain name is really, really easy. You can start your free trial at squarespace.com and if you use the offer code nerdwriter you can get 10% off your first purchase thanks guys i'll see you next time